Team, what's going on? PE seismic prep, example number five. We're gonna be talking about some structural regularities. Let's jump right into it. For the structure shown, S sub N represents the story strength of the nth story. Kind of sounds mathy, kind of sounds a little, little scary. It's not, it's just saying S sub N is the strength of the story that you're looking at. So if you were at the sixth floor, then that would be story six. So the sixth story, which means that it would be represented as S sub six for the strength of the sixth story, okay? Uh, the relative strengths of different stories are shown. That's this criteria over here. Which story can be identified as a weak story? We have our little six story structure shown here and something else I wanna make clear. Sometimes I can get in my head being like, well, you know, is it the floor that we're talking about and get kind of jumbled up? Like, is this the first or is this the second floor? How, it, it, which one represents the, the strength if I'm looking at that level? Well, don't look at it at the floor level because we're talking about story strength and the strength of each story comes from the vertical lateral components of that story, not the floors, not the diaphragms. That doesn't help you there. So when we're talking about, oh, first floor story strength. We're talking about in blue here, this is first. This would be S sub two, S sub three, and so on and so on and so on. As you're getting comfortable going through these PE seismic example problems, if you haven't, uh, if this is your first one, click back onto the channel, you'll see a few more that I have going on here. We're on number five already, but you're gonna be familiar that we're either gonna be using chapters 11, 12, 13, 14, or 15 in the ASCE 7. We're gonna find ourselves at table 12.3-1, horizontal structural irregularities. Or are we? Wait a minute, are we? Think about this for a second. Both of these tables look very, very similar, but this is actually not the correct table that you wanna be in because this is horizontal irregularities. Today we're talking about determining uh, weak stories which is about the vertical components of your vertical lateral system. So we want vertical irregularity checks. You're gonna scroll down a little bit further and you're gonna find, boom, vertical. These tables look identical to one another and we know that getting in that mindset of test taking, you're gonna be panicked a little bit. You're gonna be trying to you know, be efficient with your time and moving more quickly to, to manage everything. Be careful with this. They said it right in the problem statement. We're looking at weak stories. If we move down of our types of irregularities, we have weak story and extreme weak story. So type 5A and 5B. They're the same type of irregularity. It's just a ramping up effect of how, <laughs> how weak is the story. You know, you, you have a weak story based on certain parameters and then you can have a really freaking weak story if, uh, you know, if your system is just shit on that story. So then that bumps you into extreme and there's even more stringent criteria there. Don't get confused with weak and with soft. You have soft story regularity and then extreme soft story regularity. Very similar to your weak story cases. Soft is talking about the stiffness of your vertical lateral system at each floor, whereas weakness is talking about the strength of the vertical lateral system at each floor. So don't mess those up as well, okay? Uh, today, we're finding ourselves just sticking here at 5A. So let's take a look at how it's defined. Weak story irregularity is defined to exist where the story lateral strength is less than 80% of that in the story above. Keyword there, above. Doesn't matter about the story below in this instance. The story lateral strength is the total lateral strength of all seismic existing elements sharing the story shear for the direction under consideration. You could have five moment frames and two brace frames and three shear walls on story five. All of those combined together, come together to um, determine your story strength. The big takeaway is the 80% threshold. It doesn't say less than or equal to 80%, it says less than. So. If you're at 80%, you're good. You don't trigger this irregularity. If you're 79.5%, you trigger this irregularity. Let's take this info and let's go back because that's all that we need to solve this problem. I'm gonna start up at six. And the reason I'm starting at six is because I can already count it out. And that is because we cannot determine if the sixth story is a weak story because it's based on a comparison of the story above the story in question. 
There's mo no more stories above the sixth floor. It's the top floor. So by default, the sixth floor cannot be one. So we're done there. Uh, the fifth floor is next. Well, believe it or not, we actually, I'm gonna do a question mark because we don't know because the information wasn't provided to us. Everything that you see here, there's no criteria talking about the strength of story six, which we need to compare to story five. It might be, it might not be, but we can't answer that here today. And it's not one of our solutions, so we're not gonna sweat it too bad and we're just gonna move on, all right? Fourth floor, what do we have? All right, we finally got some juicy criteria here. Well, the strength of the fourth floor is equal to 80% of the strength of floor five. So if you don't like to just keep the variables there, if floor five had a strength of one, it's unitless here, because you're just comparing relative strength between the stories. Then if you plugged in one as your variable, S4 would equal 0 0.8 times one, which would equal 0 0.8. So that is 80% of the strength of story five. So we're right on the line there, but it doesn't say equal to, it only says less than. So story four ekes out this time and it is not a weak story. Third floor, we're gonna use this next bit of criteria. We can see that the strength of the third is somewhere between 70% of the strength of the fourth floor and 80% of the strength of the fourth floor. No matter which way you cut it there, that means that the strength of the third is less than 80% of the strength of the fourth. So that does indeed trigger our regularity. Hey, thanks for subscribing in the middle of recording. Let's go. So yes, today uh, I'm gonna do a red X here and say the third floor is indeed triggered with a weak story irregularity. Uh, what about the second story? We use the next bit of criteria. The second story has the strength somewhere between 85% of story three and 80% of story three. That's enough for me. Uh, even the lower bound at 80% is still hits that threshold so we don't trigger the irregularity. So the second floor is cleared. And then the first floor, bang, we use this criteria. Uh, the strength of the first floor is somewhere between 80% the strength of the second and 90% the strength of the second. Again, we, we miss that we're above the threshold for the irregularity trigger and we do not have a weak story in that instance. So everybody's good. We have a, a weird unknown on the fifth and the sixth we just can't analyze for this weak story condition. That leaves us with just the third floor and our final answer going green here of C. Some key takeaways before you go. We headed to chapter 12 today. We're talking about weak story, which is a type of structural irregularity. So you're gonna head to either the vertical structural irregularity table or the horizontal structural irregularity table. Make sure you have a great comprehension of which is which. And when you get there, just read through the rules for what triggers one of the types of irregularities and then compare it to the data that they give you in the problem. And there you go. You got another correct answer. You're moving on to the next and you're feeling good. This is Rich with Team Kesteva. Thanks for watching. Thanks for interacting. Thanks for subscribing. Peace.